the majority of time we're going to spend in this course is going to be looking at these modulators in isolation. However, you can combine modulators or have modulators modulate other modulators, what's referred to as second order modulation. And we won't be doing a ton of that here in this mini course. We'll do a bit of it because there are some modulators on here that really lend themselves to that. But I thought it would be a good idea to actually introduce this concept to you right at the beginning so that as you're going through and looking at these different modulators in isolation, you'll start to think of ways that you could combine these and get really awesome results. So let's go ahead and just set up one example of this, a very simple example. Here we have an XY pad, what I'm calling a core flange, which is a combination of a chorus and a flanger put inside of a chain here. So you can see on the X axis, that's what's turning on the chorus. And on the Y axis, that's what's turning on the flanger. And then in between, we have a lot of different things being changed on this pad. And while I could go in here and just sort of go bada boo da bada bee bap and record in real time, why don't I just use a couple of different modulators to do that for me. And in this case, we'll just go ahead and use, well, let's actually make it more fun. We'll use the random to control the X axis. And we will then use like a step sequencer to control the Y. I've gone ahead and I've already set up the random. The random is just a basic LFO here, and I'm having that control the X axis. So everything there is going to be very intuitive. You just need to make sure you turn bipolar off. For the Y axis, we're going to use the steps. And this one is a little bit more tricky in how you need to go about setting this up because I actually need to bring this to 50 in order to get an up and down motion with the random that I want to do. So I'll bring this to 0.5. All right, I'm going to go in, I'm going to turn that on, bring this up to 0.5. And now from here, all I have to do is throw the dice. And we can reduce the range a little bit. And a fun thing is I can just keep throwing the dice over and over and over again. And we're going to get all sorts of different variations on here um, with where this is landing. So we're going to get all sorts of different settings with our little core flange that we've created. One thing that would be great would be to map this to a button. But believe it or not, you cannot route this particular parameter. So that's something that's going to need to be changed in the future. That would be really cool to just have a button and you could just tap that and control it and then route that button to just like a key, um, like on your MIDI key, uh, keyboard or on just a regular keyboard. You could get a whole lot of variation that way. But I just wanted to show you one quick example of how you can apply a little second order modulation um, to modulate a modulator. Perfect.